Superman still hasn't gotten his powers back, and Batman is still Jim Gordon in a Batman robot suit. So what's gonna happen when they finally meet? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where we take trade paperbacks and single issues and we break them down at the digestible bites to help you understand. Then we read it dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panel's text and images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. This takes place in the time period that I mentioned at the beginning. Bruce Wayne isn't back yet and a powerless Superman needs the help of his oldest friend. Everyone in the world knows who Superman is now. He is Clark Kent, an ex-reporter who grew up on a farm in Smallville. If you want to know how that happened, we have a video in the description down below that tells that story. He needs answers, and he might have an idea of who's behind this whole thing. Maybe even behind Hordor, the people who revealed his identity. He charges into Lex Luthor's office, demanding answers. Why would he do this? What is his endgame? But Lex explains he didn't have a hand in this, but he has been researching the recent thugs that have been attacking Superman. The energy from their guns can also be found in Gotham City. Normally, all Superman needed to do was go to Gotham and ask his buddy Bruce Wayne for help, otherwise known as Batman. But something happened to Bruce Wayne, and a giant robot is currently in his place. And the giant robot isn't friendly. The first thing Robo-Batman does is try to arrest Superman, because anywhere he goes, his enemies follow, and Gotham is running a mandate that all vigilantes need to work outside of their city. Lex went along also, and he's trying to figure out these weapons, but once Superman realizes that the Robo-Batman isn't Bruce Wayne, he ignored Robo-Batman and Lex, and he went to Wayne Manor. Clark and Bruce have always been friends. So Superman walks into the Batcave, and he asks Alfred, where's Bruce? Because he needs help looking at this evidence. Alfred ignores the question about Bruce, and he walks over to analyze the evidence that Superman has brought to him. But Superman, no, Clark, stops him. Alfred, just talk to me. So Alfred sits in Bruce Wayne's old chair. You've been as good a friend to him as he's ever had, so you deserve the truth. He's dead. I know it's cliche, but he's finally free. If there is anything useful here, I'm sure he'd want you to have it. But let him rest in peace, for his sake and yours. His greatest gift to you was to be the shadow that let your light shine through. That darkness was for him, not you. Superman is in shock. He knew Bruce was missing, but dead? Superman also knows one thing. That before Alfred was a butler, he was a trained actor. So the question now becomes, where is Bruce? He can't believe that he's actually dead. Well, Superman decides that he'll figure this out later because his top priority is figuring out these thugs that have been attacking him with their weird technology and energy signatures. So he takes one of the old Bat bikes, paints it up red, and he goes to the one person that he might be able to get help from, Batman. Batman jumps in telling Superman that he's under arrest for stealing evidence from the previous crime scene, a spearhead from those barbarians that have been attacking Wayne Tech's headquarters. And Superman holds it up. This old thing? He then throws it into the fire behind him and tackles Batman to pull him away from it before it explodes! I figured out that those weapons absorb energy, which is why whoever we're fighting is making me weaker when I fight him. He's absorbing what's left of my energy, which is why we need to figure out who this is. We? We got off to the wrong foot when I hit town yesterday. I want to propose a partnership. You are a liar who put people in danger, Kent. Why would I trust you? Says the guy in a robo suit pretending to be Batman. I am Batman. Fine, then you're just as much of a liar as I ever was. If we don't work together, people are going to die. Whoever this is doesn't want Superman there to save the day or Batman, I'm assuming. I'm riding this thing to the end, so you're gonna have to deal with me no matter what. So that's it. The new Batman and powerless Superman work together to figure this out. So Superman uses Batman's computers to trace the signal the thugs are tracking, and they follow it to the Gotham waterfront, where Lucius Fox is working on a new device. Batman and Superman walk over to him to inform him that there are thugs coming for him, and he knows who it is right away. Dawn Command. They've been breaking into Wayne Tech facilities all over the world, and every time it's an unknown entity called the Dawn Command. Lucius walks them into the lab so that they can figure out where all of this energy is being used, and that's when they see Wayne Tech's latest technology. A miniature sun. One capable of destroying Gotham, or powering Gotham. Realizing that this is exactly what the Dawn Command wants, Superman heads outside to greet them because he knows that they're going to be there very soon, and Batman comes running up behind him. But what they greet outside isn't a bunch of thugs. It's a giant monster breaking out of the ground! Riding atop of him is Ukor, the Beast Lord of Subterranea! And he remembers how Superman destroyed his world. 
Wait, you know this guy and you destroyed his world? Batman says as they get into the fight. Ukor jumps down to fight Superman shouting, He stole the orbs of Subterranea and he left us in darkness! Superman dodges and he tells Ukor that if he needs help, we can help. But those orbs were being powered by the souls of innocents. He couldn't let that go. Ukor slams him to the ground. No words, no trust! You flew into my world and you forced it to change without thinking of the consequences. It's time I return the favor, Ukor says as he walks towards the mini sun. Meanwhile, while Batman is fighting the beast, knocking it around, and trying to figure out a plan. And that's when he comes up with one. He activates a high-pitched squealing noise that drops both the monster and Ukor. They've lived in darkness their entire lives. They must have sensitive ears. Superman walks over to Ukor to offer help, but Ukor grabs him and begins to strangle him! Superman keeps struggling through it though. You can pop my head right here and tamper with technology you don't understand, or we can talk for five damn minutes and figure out how we can help both our worlds. Ukor stops and he begins to think. When Batman leaps in from behind using Ukor's own staff against him, he shouts, LIAR! And he jumps on the beast, riding it back down to the world below. Batman walks over to Superman. Are you all right? What the hell was that? You distracted him, I took the shot. I wasn't distracting him. He was going to kill you. You idiot. So Superman turns around and he begins to climb down the hole into the ground. You just started a war, and I've gotta find a way to make peace. You can't do this, Kent. You aren't Superman anymore. You're flesh and blood. And you sure as hell aren't Batman. He climbs down the hole with it growing more and more treacherous as he goes. And he begins thinking to himself, how stupid can he be? This is just dumb. One slip and he could die. He isn't Superman anymore. He's just Clark Kent with super strength. So he stops to think about this. He needs a new plan. He can't just go down there and demand that they play nice. And that's when he sees one of the soldier's armor just lying around and he decides he'll try a new tactic. So he puts it on and he sneaks down and he saves some of the subterranea of civilians before linking up with the deceased soldier's unit and receiving punishment for helping the human slaves. His disguise did work though, and they think he's one of them, the people of subterranea. And they're preparing a war. Soldiers are lined up as Ukor tells them that they need to get their son back, and he will bring the light to the world of Subterranea again. That's when Batman calls Superman on his comms. Tell me what you see. How many people are down there? What are their weapons? Batman, they just need help. You'll always do the right thing, won't you? But you've got a funny idea of what the right thing is. It doesn't matter. We moved the sun out into the sea so that we can launch it into space. So unless this guy has a navy, he isn't getting it. Batman, he doesn't need a navy. He has Aquaman. And that's when Superman sees Ukor's secret weapon, the King of the Seas. The troops move quickly and they begin to rise out of the ocean, going to the location that they are keeping the mini sun at. And Superman runs off away from his undercover unit and he jumps on Aquaman. Arthur, you need to stop this. And he reaches out to Arthur, grabbing him by the shoulder. But Arthur turns around. Who dare lay a hand on me? And he cracks Superman across the face. Arthur, it's me. Are you listening or do we need to get rough? Superman? How are you even? They said you lost your powers. Well, that's mostly true. Good! I'll give you a quick death, Ukor yells out from the distance as he jumps over to fight Superman. But Arthur stops him from fighting Superman. Ukor, we are running out of time. I've joined you to get the sun out of the ocean. I'll deal with Superman. And he cracks Superman across the jaw, knocking him far into the ocean. Superman pulls himself out of the water, but Aquaman hits him again! Superman still refuses to hit his friend though. Arthur, this is crazy. Did you hear what I- I'm trying to save your stupid skin, Kent. I admire the hell out of your spirit, but you are way in over your head. Take the fall. I'll make sure you're safe, but make it look good. Meanwhile, Batman is on the oil rig, guarding the sun, looking at the sea monsters approaching. I'm Batman. I can handle this. And Superman headbutts Aquaman! Not bad. I'm not playing, Arthur. We need to stop Ukor. Batman tries his best missiles to bomb the sea monsters and Ukor, but Ukor jumps at them, deflecting the missiles. While Superman decides talking to Arthur is pointless, so he jumps over to the oil rig to help Batman as he's getting beat by Ukor. He lands on Ukor, shoving him to the ground just as the solar flare from the mini sun goes off. It's beginning to grow uncontrollable, and they need to launch it into space now before it does severe damage to the city. But Lucius tells Batman that the remote guidance system on the missile is down, so they need someone to steer it. Guess I'm flying manual, he says and they launch the whole thing up into space. Batman holds on tight as he sees Superman holding on next to him. Kent, what the hell are you doing here? You're going to get killed. I was about to say the same thing about you. What are you gonna do about this? I'm steering it away from everyone, so when it explodes, no one will get hurt. So you had a plan all along? Of course I did. Well, I'm not gonna let you die up here alone. And who knows, I used to get my power from the sun. Maybe this will recharge me. But that's when the sun flares again, burning Superman, proving that theory to be wrong. Then, the rocket explodes, knocking Batman and Superman away, and the Dawn Command uses its ship to get the sun. 
back with Ukor. He's cheering for the Dawn Command, but that's when one of its members appears behind him. Thank you for your distraction, Ukor. We'll be taking the sun now. No! Ukor shouts as the Dawn Command pulls all of his troops out, leaving him standing on the shoreline alone. The people of Subterranea needed that sun, they really did, but now we know that he was duped and it's missing. So Lucius offers his help with their energy crisis. No, liar! Ukor shouts at him, but Aquaman stops him. You saw it, Ukor. Batman and Superman almost died trying to get the sun away before it exploded. So how about we listen for a second? Superman and Batman landed in the water and they're fine. Damn it, Kent! Dawn Command stole the sun, and they can level whole cities with it! But we're both alive to track them down, Batman. Everyone says you still have Superman's spirit, and I can buy that. I even admire that. But maybe it worked for you and the other Batman, and maybe he had the patience for your impulsiveness. But now, you're more dangerous than ever. Stay out of Gotham. And Batman floated away. So Superman, going by the name John Clark, went to meet someone that he was finally able to track down. A man named Bruce Wayne. You see, ever since the accident, Bruce hasn't been dead. He's had amnesia of his time as Batman. This has given him a new lease on life. He's able to just be Bruce Wayne. Just like every one of Bruce Wayne's old teammates, Superman wants to see his friend happy for once. And he is. So, Superman will have to learn to work with this new Batman. Lastly, who is Dawn Command if they didn't work for Ukor? They work for a little-known villain named Vandal Savage. And he now has the power of the sun. We're almost done with our Robot Batman and Powerless Superman storylines. If you've been waiting for DC to bring back your heroes that you know, issue 50 is their first new adventures. Which means all of these side adventures with the new heroes is just about done. I want to take this time to ask you, did you enjoy Powerless Superman and Robo Batman? Or have you just been waiting for Bruce Wayne and Superman as we know him to come back? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you guys next time right here.